Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Cole Kakimis and welcome back to the channel. So today I'll be going over everything that you need in order to build a custom gaming PC. So that's all the different components, what they do, and how important they are for gaming. I know it can seem really daunting at first like it did for me, but once you get a general understanding of what each part does, the process itself is actually fairly simple. My hope is that by the end of this video, you'll have a pretty good idea of everything that you need to buy in order to build your first system. And of course, if there's things you don't understand or you have just other questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'm very happy to help. To start off, the only tool you're actually gonna need is a Phillips screwdriver. You'll use that to assemble every single part of the build. In addition, I recommend bookmarking the site pcpartpicker.com. It was a bunch of help to me and basically what it allows you to do is configure your entire build each and every part you can input in there and then it'll let you know if it's compatible so for example if the power supply isn't powerful enough to run all your components it'll let you know if the motherboard isn't compatible with your cpu it'll let you know all that type of stuff it's really awesome because you don't have to worry about researching all of that yourself with that out of the way the first and probably most important component when it comes to gaming is the gpu or graphics card essentially what this guy does is generate all of the graphic information and images that you see on screen the better the card you have the faster that it can work with all that information and thus provide you with higher quality graphics and higher frame rates like the memory in your computer the gpu has its own called vram or graphics memory which allows it to store all the information that it needs to process graphics like the game's terrain for example this memory is only used by the gpu and it's meant to be extremely fast so if this gets all used up all that remaining information has to get passed down to the system ram which is a lot slower and so you're going to begin to notice a lot of lag and hiccups in your game something to note is that if you want to be driving multiple monitors or have an ultra wide like myself it's important that the card has a lot of vram generally speaking the more expensive card you buy the more vram it'll have when you go to start shopping for a gpu there are two manufacturers to choose from amd and nvidia both of them design and sell their own cards for example with nvidia it's the founders edition which is the one i own but then you also see that there are companies like MSI, EVGA, and Asus that also sell them. So basically what they do is take the chip that NVIDIA or AMD designed, and then they'll put their own custom design, their own custom cooling onto it. But essentially under the hood, it is still the same GPU. There's only very tiny differences between them. Some will be overclocked, meaning they'll get a little bit more performance, or the cooling system will be a little better, so it's going to run a tad bit cooler, but for the most part, just pick whichever one that you think looks best. So if you're wondering which brand you should go for, NVIDIA is by far the most popular, but AMD has started to catch up over the years. One of the biggest advantages of going with NVIDIA though is their RTX real-time ray tracing technology, which basically creates more true-to-life shadows and reflections, making the game overall look a lot more realistic. Going with an RTX card definitely ensures that you're going to be future-proof and you'll be able to play all the latest titles and high settings for years to come. There's a bunch of different variants of their cards, but the three main levels are the 3060 entry level, 3070 mid-tier, and then the 3080 high-end flagship. They also have the TIs, which are even better, but I don't want to go so deep into this, so basically just higher number equals better. Just remember that. On the AMD side, though, the biggest advantage is that they tend to be a lot cheaper while still performing pretty similar to their NVIDIA counterparts. I recommend checking out benchmarks to see which card is going to perform the best at your budget. You'll also want to check the architecture that your games are based on. So, for example, with Call of Duty, it is based on NVIDIA, and with Apex Legends, it's based on AMD. And so if you have either card, it'll perform better for the games that are built on its architecture. If you're someone who plays a ton of Call of Duty, you know, it may be worth looking at NVIDIA, but on the other hand, if you play a ton of Apex Legends, maybe AMD is the way to go. Now onto the CPU or the central processing unit, this is basically the brain of the computer. Pretty much it performs every task that doesn't involve displaying something to the screen and handles game logic. While it's not the one doing the graphic rendering, it is still sending that information to the GPU. There are again two manufacturers, Intel and AMD. An important thing to look at in CPUs is the amount of cores. I once saw this explanation that I thought was really good, so I'll mention it now. Basically, a CPU is kind of like a highway, and each core is like a lane. So if you only have one lane, things are going to go slow, it's going to get all clogged up. Then if you have two, it's going to go by a little faster, and with four, you know, people are going to be flowing, it's going to be all good, you can do a lot of multitasking, and handle that all really well. So when it comes to gaming, I would say four cores is probably a good sweet spot, but if you can get more, that's always better. When deciding between the two brands, AMD is quickly becoming the better option. I know that when I upgrade, I'm switching over to a Ryzen. Intel does tend to have slightly better performance in games because of its single core performance, but when it comes to multitasking, it's significantly worse. If you plan on doing anything else, especially video editing, I would say AMD is probably the way to go. So the motherboard is another very important part of the build. While it doesn't directly impact performance, like you're not going to get extra FPS because you went with ACES over MSI, it is still very important that you get a reliable one because 
everything in your computer is sitting on it. There's a spot for the GPU to plug in, a socket for the CPU to sit, everything else. The biggest advantages of going for a more premium, expensive one are that you're going to be able to overclock or get a little more performance out of your components. You'll get extra expansion slots if you ever want more USB ports, a Wi-Fi card, an Elgato card, etc., etc. More I.O. ports, which are basically just anything related to input-output. You get better sound and potentially better internet connection. For example, my motherboard had both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, and this was really nice so I didn't have to go in there and configure anything extra with a Wi-Fi card or anything like that. But if you can, it's always better to game on wired Ethernet because you're going to have a more fast and reliable connection. This is especially important if you're playing a lot of online games like Rainbow Six Siege where ping is really important. Now, one thing I need to mention is that motherboards are only built on one chipset. So if you see this box here, it says Intel motherboard. This can only be used with Intel CPUs. You cannot throw a Ryzen on here. And it's the same over with a Ryzen board. You can't throw an Intel CPU. So this sucks for me because I have to go buy another motherboard when I want to upgrade my CPU. But just knocked over all the boxes. But it needs to be like that because the AMD CPUs are different from Intel CPUs. So when you're going to look for one, you got to make sure they're compatible. There's a lot more specifics when it comes to compatibility. There's a lot of different versions of specific motherboards. So like I said, go back to PC Part Picker because that is super helpful. It'll let you know everything that you need to know about compatibility. There are three different sizes of motherboard. There is the ATX full size, micro ATX, and mini ITX. Depending on which size motherboard you get, you're also going to have to get the matching case size. So you can't put an ATX in a mini ITX case. It's not going to fit for pretty obvious reasons. When you want to buy a case, look for one that has good airflow so that all the PC components inside are going to stay cool or running. Unfortunately, a lot of budget ones don't have great airflow, and even my NZXT one is not great, so I'm going to be looking for something a little different when I upgrade. On top of this, you may want to see what extra features the case may have, like RGB lighting, extra ports, or better cable management. Overall, though, aesthetics are probably going to play the biggest role, so just choose one you think looks good. Next thing to talk about is cooling. Just making sure the PC isn't running too hot. There are two main routes to go, either air cooling or liquid AIO radiator cooling. Air coolers tend to be a lot cheaper while also providing similar or better performance than liquid. However, liquid coolers are much easier to install, and in my opinion, they look a lot better. I've been using the Kraken X62 from NZXT and had no issues with it so far. There's a lot of RGB lighting effects that you can configure in the software, and it integrates really well with the case. Pretty much how it works is the heat is transferred from the CPU into the pipes through the water, up into the radiator, which then blows it out, and then that process just continues over and over. The downside, though, is that the pump can be loud at times, and there is a chance that it could break, but over the years, this has really become less of a problem. In addition to this, there are also case fans, which are generally installed already, but you can buy some extra ones. Like, with my case, they're not RGB, and... Like, come on, you want RGB fans, so I'm probably going to have to buy those eventually. These can be set to either intake or outtake, so they can take in the cooler air of the room or blow out the hot air that's generated inside. Now, talking about RAM or random access memory, this component holds data about logic from the CPU. Things like your player's location and what weapon you're using are stored here. It's important to have enough RAM because, similar to how the VRAM works, if you use it all up, it gets sent down to the hard disk, which is even slower. RAM has a speed that's measured in megahertz, and generally, you want to aim for at least 3000. Overall, it's not really important. The speed that you pick doesn't make too much of a difference in games, so you don't have to worry about it all that much. What is important, though, is the amount of RAM that you have. I would say that 16GB is the sweet spot to be able to run current games properly. I'd really only recommend going for 32 or more if you want to future-proof yourself, or you're going to be doing a lot of multitasking and things like video editing. Especially since upgrading is so easy, both that it's a literal 10-second process and being so inexpensive, I think you're probably okay going with 60 now and then later down the line upgrading as necessary. The one thing to note though is that you're going to want to have dual channel RAM, meaning for 16 gigabytes, you're going to have two 8 gigabyte sticks because you never want to go with just one as you'll see a significant hit in performance. Next up on the list is storage, which there are three options. You have NVMe SSDs, which plug in straight to the motherboard, SATA SSDs, which plug into the case for power and data transfer, and then a hard disk drive. Pretty much, you should stay away from spinning these hard drives because they are so slow, unless you really care about capacity because you can get a lot of storage for a super low price. Another thing is that hard drives can die a lot quicker than SSDs, which last usually a really long time. This is great if you're building your first PC because you're not going to have to worry about replacing that drive for a while, other than of course buying new ones for extra storage. NVMe SSDs are the fastest but more expensive than SATA SSDs. However, over the years, they've started to get really reasonably priced and I think they're well worth the investment. I have this 970 EVO from Samsung with a terabyte of storage and it's really fast. This is actually one that I upgraded to later on, and so I also have this terabyte drive from Intel, making for a total of 2 terabytes. Yay for math. While in game there will be no boost in performance between them, what will be affected is load times. Booting up to Windows and games is going to be so much faster using an SSD as opposed to a hard drive. Now talking about the PSU or power supply. 
This, as the name suggests, supplies power to the PC. There are a few types, modular, semi-modular, and non-modular. What modular means is that you, as the PC builder, can attach or detach the cables from the power supply as needed. Semi-modular power supplies will have all the most important cables hardwired, but then allow the other additional cables like PCIe or SATA to be modular. Then there's just non-modular, which has every single cable connected, which is definitely not a good idea if you want to have any sort of cable management. Power supplies have a set wattage, which is the max amount that it can provide to your computer. You can use PC Part Picker to get an estimate of how much wattage your build will use, and then I would recommend around 150 to 200 watts of headroom. It's important that you don't cheap out, so choose one with good build quality and that's very reliable. They're rated for efficiency using a tier system, starting at bronze, then go up to silver, gold, and platinum. I'd recommend going for gold. Now all that's left to talk about is some added aesthetics. I love to throw in Funko Pops because it gives some extra personality and really allows me to have more of a theme to my build. You can buy RGB light strips and fans or look for cases that already have these included. When shopping for components, you can find motherboards and GPUs with different color schemes so you can keep everything consistent. But what I've found is that I really want to get like a white GPU and a white motherboard to really go along with the setup and they are really hard to find. And so guys, that is everything that you need to buy in order to build your first custom gaming PC. I hope that I was able to break down everything so it was easy to understand. Of course, it's impossible to recommend exactly which component you should go for because there's so many different options for so many different use cases and budgets, but again, I recommend checking out PC Part Picker because you can filter through different parts and make sure that they're all compatible with one another. Depending on your budget and what games you'll be playing, looking up benchmarks will be a great way so that you can know what will be the best bang for your buck. If you have any further questions, feel free to drop a comment or shoot me a message on Instagram. With all that said, I owe all of you who have made it to this point in the video a huge thank you, I really appreciate it. If you want to see more tech and gaming related content in the very near future, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching and take care.